Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the My Footballing Journey series. Today I'm joined by Mika Gabichava. Mika has worked for a host of clubs across the elite level of European football and joins us today to discuss his journey so far, plans for the future and advice for young budding sports professionals. So welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Joe. First of all, thanks a lot for having me. It's always great to discuss football and scouting with people who are interested in it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I really appreciate that you found the time to come on. Um, as I said, this is episode 10. This full episode will be available on all platforms. Uh, but if you're interested in hearing the full unedited version of all of these conversations, you definitely want to check out the Patreon community. And for just £5 a month, you'll have access to these podcasts, one-to-one guidance with myself and plenty of other great perks. So this podcast is all about journeys. Let's start at the beginning of yours. How did this whole journey in football begin for you? Um, so my journey started back in 2019. Um, I started my studies in Barcelona. I studied sports management uh, on my bachelor's degree. And throughout this time, um, I did multiple internships and additional courses, uh, mainly in football scouting, uh, coaching, analysis, because I thought that for example, if there are 100 students uh, graduating with the same degree, I had to stand out with something. And that something for me was additional courses um, in addition to um, internship experience and so on. So my very first uh, experience was during the pandemic um, in 2020. Um, I found myself uh, at a Danish scouting company. Of course, it was done remotely. Uh, so this was sort of like a startup company that... Uh, um, basically offered services for different uh, professional football clubs. So my responsibility was to scout at certain leagues um, throughout certain period of time and basically to create shadow teams and databases of players. So this was my very first scouting experience. Um, it lasted for four months. And shortly after that, I found myself at Odense, uh, a Danish Superliga club. And I did very similar things over there. Um, I scouted different leagues. Um, across um, several weeks and basically I created shadow teams and uh, databases uh, for the club and then basically uh, I did that for a couple of months that was a voluntary work and then I found myself um, at Villarreal uh, but at Villarreal the internship was much more more diverse um, of course it was scouting but uh, in addition to scouting, it was also um, learning about coaching, about the methodology of the club, about how they manage their players in terms of psychology and all the social aspects. So it was much more diverse. It was six months and I learned a lot. It was a great learning experience. And um, in addition to all of that, I was also scouting uh, for two and a half years, uh, approximately, uh, for a local agency. Um, back then when I started uh, scouting for them, it was a very small agency. One of the first players that I scouted was Giorgi Mamardashvili, the goalkeeper that now plays at Valencia. So he was one of our first, I think he was actually the first player that we signed at the agency. And then a few months after that, we moved him to Valencia. And that was a huge, huge event in my in my career and uh, in, in, for Georgian football in general. Uh, so it was a great experience. And um, basically, I stopped working uh, for the agency uh in 2022 uh, so basically as soon as i graduated from the university and shortly after that um by the end of the summer of 2022 um i received an i received an offer from dinamo tbilisi my my local club mm. um and basically initially i started as um as a data scout uh which meant that basically i had to use a certain data scouting platform uh to narrow down my um let's say the list of players um, and then basically watch them on Y Scout, and then suggest these players to the for the first team recruitment. And uh, basically, after a few months, I was um, appointed as uh, the head of scouting because I suggested to uh, basically restructure and organize the scouting department, which didn't exist before mm. that. Um, which might sound ridiculous, but I think we will uh, um, go into more details uh, a bit later on. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, obviously, you've talked there about clubs kind of across loads of different countries, and you touched a little bit about where your your hometown is. Um, and obviously, recently, we've seen um, some major success within Georgian football. Uh, has that had quite an impact on you and, and, and your footballing journey as well, where you come from and football in Georgia? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, with the recent success of Georgian football, I think now um, clubs um, in Europe and all around the world are looking at Georgia uh, from a diff different perspective um, on the pitch and off the pitch. Uh, I mean, um, other than the players themselves, uh, they're looking for people who know Georgian football well, so they want to have this expert insight into Georgian football. And I think, I believe that's what that was one of the reasons why and how I ended up at Ghent uh, today um, because they were interested in this market. They had some uh, links with Georgian players in the past, although not very successful. So that's why they wanted to, to find someone who was expert and to improve these links with Georgia. So tell us a little bit about the role that you currently play at Ghent. Yeah, so basically uh, now I'm a regional scout uh, for Ghent. I do mostly video scouting. Um, I'm based in Tbilisi. I work from here remotely uh, and I'm responsible for 10 leagues across Europe, uh, mostly Eastern European leagues. That's where my specialty is, I would say, uh, including Georgia, of course. Um, so, yeah, that's my um, uh, responsibility at the moment, uh, keeping track of the progress of the players and identifying uh, players for the first team recruitment and uh, basically basically creating shadow teams for, for each league. Um, and yeah as I said, keeping track of players and their development. You touched a little bit on data um, within the last couple of, of questions and, and answers that we've discussed there. Um, I was going to ask you what kind of a role data plays in your recruitment pipeline or has played, especially, you know, at Dinamo Tbilisi. Um, but I, I guess I'd, I'd actually kind of segue more into what do you see the role of, of data in football? I mean, do you think that the way that data has started to be used is positive? Do you think that it needs to be used in conjunction with video scouting, live scouting, etc. What's your philosophy? Yeah, definitely. Um, I believe that data shouldn't be used solely for data scouting. Like uh, you should definitely double check everything through video or even live scouting. That's even better. Um, I think uh, the greatest advantage of using data is uh, to basically win time because with uh, with the vast information that we have nowadays uh, in world football, you have to narrow down your search and you have to uh, be more efficient. So data essentially allows you to be more efficient and to do things uh, in a faster way. Um, and basically, at the moment, um, at Ghent, we, we are mostly using a skill corner um, mm -hmm. and we started using it uh, quite recently. And... Um, what skill corner essentially allows us is that uh, we can um, filter players and narrow down our search uh, based on their uh, physical um, attributes because as you might know belgian league is quite physical it's one of the most physically demanding leagues in europe so uh, physicality plays a huge role in players performance um, in belgium so if we know in advance which players will be suitable for our league on a physical level that will not narrow down the search greatly so we already have filters that each player should comply with and if they are not up to the standard we basically skip the player immediately and go to the next option so what does a day-to-day -day work schedule look like for you so for me personally because i work remotely uh from from georgia um it's more flexible. Mm -hmm. However, I should say that um, it's not a nine to five job. Uh, you should work, um, or uh, I would say you can work all the time. Uh, sometimes I have days when I watch football until 3 a.m. in the morning, but that's not something that the club forces me to do. It's personally my, uh, my own preference to do that because I want to find players and sometimes to find that one player, you have to do a lot. Uh, so therefore, sometimes I find myself in situations where I watch football the whole day. Uh, but sometimes that is what it takes to find that one player who will be uh, the the game changer and the one who will win the league for you. So, uh, so yeah, I would say all every day is different uh, depending on game schedules and everything. Mostly, I do video scouting, mm -hmm. some live scouting as well, mostly in Georgia. Uh, but yeah, and mostly it's chaotic and uh, watching football uh, every day. 
just for the people listening, uh, and, and especially for the people on Patreon who will who will have questions who maybe don't have an insight into Georgian football, you touched there on the live scouting side. What's that experience like there? What kind of crowds um, uh, do you get at games over there? Uh, what kind of size are the stadiums? And, and how many scouts are over there watching live games? In Georgia? Mm. Um, so in Georgia, the scouting landscape is uh, very underdeveloped, I would say. Uh, the crowds are not big at stadiums, so you will mostly find yourself at peace. So um, if, if you look at uh, crowds in Serbia, for example, uh, people are going crazy over there, but that's something that you will maybe never find in, in Georgia, uh, well, at least on a club level. When the national team is playing, that's mm -hmm. a whole different story. That, that's a crazy, crazy mm -hmm. thing. But when, when, you, when you watch, for example, mid-table fixture, um, on a local level, that's uh, like a calm place, so you won't find yourself in big crowds and mm. fights and dangerous situations. Uh, football pitches are not great, mm. so it's really, really good to um, watch those games live because when you watch those games on video, sometimes it's it's terrible quality. You the ball is moving terribly, so it might be frustrating. So watching those games live is, is, is much better and much more accurate in terms of your judgment and um, rating of players at the end of the game. So some people may know you from quite an interesting recruitment internship program that you oversaw at Dinamo Tbilisi. Can you just maybe give us a little bit of insight into how that worked, how that came about and, and kind of the outcomes of that now that you're not there now? Yeah, so basically, as I mentioned, I started as a, a data scout. Um, so my responsibility was to find players and suggest them for the first team recruitment. But shortly after starting my job, I realized that we didn't have any actual structure or organization. Mm. Um, what I mean by that is that when I would find a player, I would, for some unknown unknown reason, suggest this player to our opposition scout uh, to our opposition analyst, who basically never had time to actually check players um thoroughly uh so that is why out of let's say 10 players that i would suggest for the first team recruitment only one or two would reach the head coach who would essentially make the final decision um on on every player um so because i saw that the process was inefficient i i had a conversation with the ceo and i suggested to restructure the whole thing and make it more organized and um, I suggested to create something that I've seen throughout my experience, uh, throughout my scouting experience uh, during these internships and the scouting courses that I did. So I tried to customize uh, this internship and pick some good stuff from everything that I've seen um, from my previous experiences. And um, I did, and I created this, um, let's say, scouting department um, out of this um, interns. Um, um, and basically what this allowed us was that basically this was my experience before joining Dynamo. I was always doing internships for around three years. I did internships all the time. And because I knew that those internships were the key factor in uh, finding the job, I thought that it would have been beneficial both ways. On one hand, interns would get an experience at a professional football club mm -hmm. and they could put something on their CV while they were doing their studies at the university. And on the other hand, uh, we as club uh, would get information on numerous leagues across the world that Dinamo Tbilisi never had information about. Previously, uh, Dinamo Tbilisi recruited solely on uh, basically agent suggestions and their tips. But now um, after that, we, we had actual scouting structure in place so we could actually follow players and keep track of them and uh, and yeah we actually did sign some players after that so it was a success um and it, it was the first time where a football club of Dynamo Tbilisi had a actual proper scouting structure that's brilliant that's really cool um I think that segues on quite well you started touching on the internships that you did um, because the next question I was going to ask you is kind of what advice you would give to young football scouts and I guess the first thing you're probably going to say is go and do internships. Um, what other advice would you give to, to young, you know, budding football scouts who are looking to forge careers in the game? Yeah, so first of all, I would say uh, try to invest in your education because sometimes uh, that is the underrated part. Now I see that uh, a lot more um, 
bachelor's degrees in terms of uh, performance analysis, um, coaching start to uh, pop up. So I would definitely suggest to explore those opportunities um, because that would be great. Uh, speaking from my own experience, um, I did sports management, but if you're trying to get scouting and more on the pitch stuff, um, then I would definitely suggest to uh, explore performance analysis and coaching bachelor's degrees um, to get closer to scouting and sports side um, uh, of the football club and not the business side of the football mm. club, which is more related to sports management. Then um, the second thing that I would suggest is to specialize in in a certain uh, region. Um, what I mean by that is that um, there's a trend uh, ongoing uh, currently at different uh, football clubs across Europe that they're trying to find scouts who are specialized in, in a certain region. So, for example, let's say uh, a football club would prefer to find a scout who knows um, three or four leagues by heart, for example, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Turkey, one one region in one specific area of Europe, rather than a scout who knows um, 20 leagues um, like on a 50-60% scale. You know what? I mean? So they would definitely pre prefer to have uh, someone who knows um, every single player within two, three, or four leagues that they cover. Yeah. In addition to having... Um, direct contacts with with clubs agents players maybe or people involved in football from those countries that you specialize in will be greatly beneficial because that would allow you to double check the player's background their psychological mental side so that's uh, that's another uh, thing to um, keep in mind and also uh, the last thing that i would suggest is that um, don't listen to people who tell you that if you haven't played football you cannot make it into scouting because um, from my own experience, I can tell you that I've never played football, even on a high school level. I've never played football. And uh, um, I'm I'm still young. I'm 24 years old and I'm already at Ghent. And, um, and this is something that a lot of people have told me that I will struggle if I've never played football. And that's an absolute lie. Because I've never, I've never ever experienced any problems with not having playing experience. Of course, if you have playing experience, then that can be beneficial. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that if you haven't played football, you're done. You you will never make it. And we're starting to see that at the top level as well. You know, if you look in for you know the English Premier League, for example, you're starting to see directors of football, um, and, and sporting directors who haven't played the game either, and. The world is certainly moving in that sense, a hundred percent. I want to just touch on something that you you mentioned there in terms of um, really getting to know a more select niche group of of leagues. How would you say is the best way to go about getting that really in depth knowledge? Is it just a case of watching, watching, watching football, or is there other things that you can do to to learn those leagues more in depth? Well, yeah, definitely. One of the ways is just watching football, um, and First of all, I would say that when you're choosing the region that you want to specialize in, you have to think, well, which club you want to work for in the future, or for example, which clubs you want to work for. Um, so for example, let's say if you're trying to work for um, English clubs, you have to make a research about which regions do they prefer? Do they prefer Scandinavia? Do they prefer South America? Do they prefer North America? And you have to start specializing in those countries that um, those clubs that you want to work for um, are most interested in you know that's that's the fir first point the second point is that you have to make contacts with with people over there so for example if you if you chose to specialize in Scandinavia reach out to those people uh, reach out to scouts from Scandinavia people who work for different clubs um, agents maybe even players because they can give you um, let's say some sort of insights that you wouldn't see on Y Scout or Twitter or something like that on, on the internet in general. So definitely make contacts um, and uh, that will give you good, uh, let's say, hints and clues which games to watch, which players to watch and um, where to keep your focus on, you know.
So obviously your journey isn't over. You just touched on the fact that you're 24 and that you're at the start of your journey. And, and this podcast is all about the whole journey, not just the beginning. So, you know, looking in the medium to long term future, what do you hope to achieve? Do you like to set goals? Definitely. Uh, setting goals and objectives is, uh, of course, the way to get to your ultimate final goal. Uh, I would say my medium term goal is to be in a senior position, sort of like a head of scouting, head of recruitment, something like that. Um, my long term um, goal is to be my long, long term goal, like in maybe 20, 25 years, would be to be a sporting director at a Champions League level club. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that would be my ultimate goal. That's really cool. Well, I've really enjoyed this conversation and I'm I'm really glad that, that this conversation specifically um, is going out everywhere, not just to um, the guys on Patreon. Um, if you are listening and you are part of the Patreon community and you have any specific questions um, that you want to send over to me that I can send over to Mika, then, then I'm more than happy to do that. If you aren't a member of the community already, then you definitely should check that out. Um, thank you for tuning into episode 10 of the My Football and Journey series. And it's been a pleasure to speak with you as well. So thank you for joining us. Likewise. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. I've been Joe and I'll catch you next time.